Yo, 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 what's going on everybody? Y'all already know we gotta start this thing off the same as every single last podcast. All right, so the reason why we do this podcast is to ask questions. We ask questions to ultimately find a solution. All right, so everybody on this podcast, there's not gonna be any hard feelings. Everybody comes from different backgrounds. Everybody's in different areas of their life right now. So y'all just keep that in mind, man. Again, no hard feelings is always, always gonna be nothing but love. And we're just basically here to voice our opinions and find a solution to whatever problem we are presented with. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and get this thing started, big baby. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so uh, let's go ahead and kick this off. So this is the second interview that we're doing, and this is basically just a little behind the scenes, getting to know the cast of The Truth Podcast, all right? So we've already did me. I've been in the hot seat or whatever. Now we're going to do Desiree. Desiree, the way that we start this thing off is we allow people just to, you know, uh, briefly go over who they are before we actually get into the questions, you know what I'm saying? how you got to where you are today. So, you know, if people were just out there just listening, what would you want them to know about Desiree and how you arrived at the person that you are today? Well, it all started so, so long ago. Oh, I was born in a little shack. (laughs) Man, cut that out to my parents and um oh, that's gonna take like five minutes five or ten minutes <laughs> well you said it look okay i'm a mother of two i am in school um working on my bachelor's degree in business administration um i am on the dean's list i'm on the honor roll um I just had brain surgery. Um, I was terrified, still going through the process of recovery. Um, I'm about two months post-op and six days, and I'm doing well. Um, I like to have fun. I like to help people as much as I can with pretty much anything. I put other people before myself um, a lot of the times, but I feel like I put a lot of good out into the universe and I do see a lot of good coming back to me. Well, I know you got like a lot of businesses and stuff going on. Tell us about that too. I'm a travel agent. There we go. There we go. That's what we want to talk. We want to hear that. So anything that you need to book a flight, a hotel, if it's out of town, in town, um, up the street, just because you want to go, you can book through me. It's A-N-T-H-R-O-N-I-A, four, I'm sorry, A-N-T-H-R-O-N-I-A-M-O-O-R-E-R dot IntelliTravel, so it's I-N-T-E-L-E-T-R-A-V-E-L dot com. Go quick little plug, man. If y'all need anything, man, she would definitely take care of all of your needs. Trust me, man. She look out. She look out. All right. Is there anything else that you want the people to know about you before we get started? No. If you want to know, just ask. Okay. All right. Cool. Okay. So let's go ahead and just dive straight into this, man. All right, Desiree, you are officially in the hot seat. All right. So Let's just go ahead and answer these questions. Let's be direct so we can move on to the next one. All right. Are you the best version of you? Nope. Why not? I'm still working on me. And now, if you want to take the work in progress in me, then yeah. So what are you currently working on to become the best version of you? Um, I'm working on my physical. I'm working on my mental. I'm working on my emotional. I'm so indecisive and and I hate it sometimes. It's like I'm at war with myself, but. What are you doing? What are you doing physically to work on yourself? Trying to get my body together. I'm not going to have the lipo. I'm trying to do it the 
hard way. Um, I'm walking every day. I'm drinking water. I'm eating a salad. <laughs> so I've tried to get myself together um, physically because I won't, I don't, I'm not where I want to be. And especially since after the um, surgery, prior to the surgery, I wasn't able to do a lot of physical with myself. So now that I'm just now being able to get back to being able to do the physical, I'm trying to work on it. So ideal, like uh, if we were to put a number on it, uh, what what weight would you like to be at? Um, maybe 165. 150. 150 would be a little bit more like it. Yeah. 150. You, you, you put words in my mouth now? I'm just saying, I think <laughs> you're trying to- 150, trying to... I think I'd be too small. Mm -mm. 150 is actually perfect for your, your height. Mm. all right so mentally what are you doing you know this is actually like the biggest focus for me you know what i'm saying that that mental i think it honestly starts there what are you doing mentally to help work work on you know whatever it is to become the best version of you really i'm not gonna say nothing but it's like to be honest it's okay because I mean, I'm doing stuff, but it's like, I don't, it helps me. Like I have a lot of thoughts and I talk, I only talk to like certain people, you know, like in my inner small circle that I can open up to. I only have one person that I can like completely open up to and that person that understands me. And we do a lot of talking and communicating and, you know, maybe two people, I'm going to say two, but is who are those people for you? I'm not gonna say. I mean, we're doing an interview, dog. I mean, we ain't like we're gonna go and look them up. I mean, a mom, a dad, a family a member, and a friend. Okay, all right. Yeah. Are any one of these people uh professional therapists? No. So what what do they do um to help benefit this then? They be honest. Mm -hmm. They don't look at things from one side I mean I feel like I'm really good myself at looking at things from all angles because you, if I go to a therapist they're going to break it down to me at all angles so mentally I do that I look at it from my faults you know some people don't look at the things that they do as a fault or a negative or a positive I look at it from every aspect like everybody's perspective you know in that situation yeah. or even sometimes out of that situation from somebody outside looking in you Man, know those are the things that i you know when it comes to a mother-daughter relationship a father-son relationship or whatever like a family member uh relationship you don't think that those people are still going to be they're not going to be as harsh because, you know, they're a family member, they're close to you. So you may think that they're being honest, but I would say, honestly, go, go to a professional, man, somebody that doesn't really have any ties to you. Somebody that, that's actually been doing it professionally and they've actually helped people, you know, overcome different situations. I'm not saying that your, your family members can't do that, but I'm just saying maybe, you know, it might be in your best interest to actually to try to go that route. I get that. I just so can't you, afford that route. Have you looked it up at all? No, I haven't. All right. So that would be the next thing that I would ask you to do, to, to look it up and see how much it actually costs. So emotionally, so let's go ahead and get to that aspect. What are you doing emotionally to become the best version of you? Um, more critical thinking instead of um, emotionally, like making decisions off of emotions. Um, look at it, looking at situations differently and not from just my point of view because of, or, make, or making decisions later after the fact of a situation of being, being emotionally tied to it let me clear my mind first before 
jumping on it. So I mean, like I emotionally, I'm trying to just kind of push myself away from it because it's hard to make a decision off of you being emotionally attached or tied. All right. And do, you, do you feel like you've made any progress behind us? Yes. <laughs> I've made a lot of progress. So based on your, your the last conversation you've been having, having with certain certain individuals, you would say that uh, from maybe what two or three months ago, you made some type of progress, or even a year ago, you would say you've made some type of progress. A year ago, I've made a whole bunch of progress. Two years ago, I've made so much progress. Like, but even like even from the last conversation that I had with someone, it was so matured. Mm -hmm. and we could actually sit there and talk you know versus during during these conversations did they do anything to trigger anything mm -mm. So no triggers i mean like because even i guess the triggering isn't there anymore i well, don't know or like the certain the things thing. people can say or do that would trigger and cause you to get uh emotional or get into your okay life. So let me let me say something. Yeah, it was an emotional time, maybe about 72 hours ago. Mm -hmm. But then within the last 24 to 48 hours after that. And I'm not going to say it triggered an issue, mm -hmm. but it was still handled more professional, I guess. At the at the point of time of of the action or whatever took place. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it was just there. Okay, well then we'll we'll talk later. Da da. And then it ended. I didn't speak for the next forty eight to seventy two. I mean, twenty four to forty eight hours after that conversation. But then within the next conversation, it was great. You know, everything went well. All right. Would you say that you're in the best uh, situation at the moment? No. What are some decisions that you have made that have landed you in the situation that you're in now, then? Um, in my my um, situation, it's it's just life for me. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of things that I have going on right now is because of my life altering um, diagnosis with my surgery. So it's like I'm just kind of still under doctor's care listening to what the doctors say i'm starting to pick back up the pieces that i lost then but it's getting better slowly um, but i just have a lot of stuff that i want to do that i have that i feel like i have to do to get myself back where i want to be so within maybe the next six months to a year you know i'll be back where i want to be and that's just overall. Okay, I'm not going to try to get into that uh, too much right now. We're going to go ahead and skip on to the next part. So how many children do you currently have? Five. I'm just kidding. I only have two. Uh, and have you ever been married? No. Ever been engaged? No. Have you ever been proposed to? All right, do you want to be married? Yes. What kind of woman, I mean, what kind of man do you want? I want somebody honest. I want somebody caring. I want somebody loving. I want somebody romantic. Um, I want somebody strong-minded, but willing to listen. Um, I want a provider. Um, I want him to be business minded. I want him to be able to take charge um, in different situations, different decisions. I mean, I want him to be able to, because if it, he may not be my child's dad, you know, so I want him to be able to be accepting um, to my children. 
and everything else that I have, my family, my friends, you know, I don't want nobody jealous. Um, I don't want nobody hateful, but in those situations, I want that. I do want somebody who is um, successful in life. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. Um, so do you want him to have children or do you care? He can have children. I mean, would be the limit? Four. Four, okay, all right. Do you care if your, your husband is black or white? No. All right, and do you want to, do you want him to pay uh, at least 51% of the uh, of the bills that come at least? At least 50. At least 51 more? I mean, no, I think we should do half and half. I mean, right. if he wants to do more, okay, but. You want more children? I do want one. <laughs> more children, okay. So um, do you want to work after, you know, that child is born? Yeah. No, I mean, like, as soon as, uh, as soon as you're able, as soon, what is it, well, like six weeks? As soon as six weeks is over, you want to go, go ahead and go back to work? Yeah. I mean, okay. I've always, I, that's a kind of hard of a decision. I mean, hard thing, because, like, after my last child, I didn't get a break. Like, as soon as after I had her and got home, I didn't have no help. So, Okay. All right. So just real, real quick. So uh, a man, because he's going to at least have to, you know, handle at least while you're, you know, pregnant, you know, if you're off your feet or whatever, he's going to have to be able to, to control or handle that thing for a few months. But anyway, so how much does a man need to make in order to provide and sustain a family of what, four? Yeah, four. How much you need to make yearly? Yes. To be comfortable? Yes. And if he's the only one working? Mm -hmm. Be able to provide for his family while you're off your feet, while you're taking care of the kids. The minimum would be there's a bracket there. So he's going to have to at least be able to make 60 to 80,000. This is the minimum a not year. Even, not even close. Way more. Way I mean, more. It I mean, like, but it depends on how we live in, too. When you start thinking about pampers, you start thinking about child care, the whole nine, that's a lot. That's a lot of money. That's a you lot said of minimum. I told you minimum. Yeah. And where, where are you going to be staying? That, 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 that's, that's the thing. We didn't go into all that. Where, yeah. where do you want to stay? Okay, well, if we go that way, if we go on that route, then we're gonna have to uh, we're gonna have to look at things. Yeah, in whatever. A what, I mean, even even in one of the poor cities, that's it's still gonna be a lot more than that. But go ahead. Where, where do you want to stay? I mean, I could stay in Charlotte, but I would like to have a nice. It's gonna be high. In a nice high, area. Extremely I high. Because we're in Charlotte, extreme. and you got to think about it. So, a man of four. When you start thinking about a family, we're not talking about an apartment now. Now we're talking about a house. Because a man does not want his family to stay in an apartment. It's going to be a house where you're going to have mortgage. You're going to have bills, light bill, gas bill, the whole nine. So it's definitely not going to be nowhere near $80,000. It's going to be over $200,000 per year for a family of four. Absolutely. So how many men make that kind of money? Not many. I just just give an estimate if you were to a percentage. Of, yeah. 20, 30 percent? Not even close. Uh, that's less. Only 10 percent of oh. men make over a hundred thousand mm. dollars. And it's eight percent of it's black men. And that's not accounting for the men that are already married, the men that are gay, you know, sexual preference, whatever, whatever the case may be. That's eight percent of all men, all black men. 10% of all men. Just learn something. All right. So 
the next question that I would ask you is, do you know what those men, those type of men want? I'm sure they probably, I, I mean, I don't know what they want, but I, I can't answer that question because I don't know what they want. We'll, we'll sure. get into Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into that. But they want a woman that's fit, feminine, and friendly. Those are some of the things that they want. All right. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's move on to the next question. Would you consider yourself a high value woman and before you answer that question being a high value woman has absolutely nothing to do with your money or your education because men we don't give two shits about either of those things how much money you make where you live uh the you know if you got a phd and all that other stuff men don't care if you are doing what you need to do to take care of yourself for the most part a guy's gonna be cool with that so would you consider yourself a high value woman would and why would that why would you say that i feel like i handle my business i take care of me i take care of my children um i think highly of myself so i would consider myself to be high value so a high the way that we would determine a high value woman we would look at uh how would you benefit your man if you were to get into a relationship, how would you be beneficial to your to your mate? I'm very supportive. I'll be I'm completely supportive of whatever he's doing. I mean, work, home, outside of home, outside of work. Um, I care. I'm going to be there whenever he needs me, regardless of what it's going to take to do. Um, I'm going to make sure he eats every day. I'm going to make sure that he has everything that he needs. He's not going to have to go elsewhere to look for any of his Would needs. you say that you're submissive? Slightly. It's a yes or no question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you say that you're submissive? Yes. All right, so based on the relationships that you have had with men, would you say that they would say that you're submissive? Yeah. Have you asked any of these guys? No, but I'm gonna ask, because I want to know the answer myself. Based on, okay, so what was your, your longest lasting relationship? As an adult. Not off and on. I mean, like, you know, solid relationship. Was it anywhere near five years? No, I don't even think, no. Mm -mm. So I can't even consider, consider these relationships. I mean, like, a year? A year. A year was your longest lasting relationship. Mm -hmm. and we're not gonna oh go ahead go ahead i mean because you said not off and on and it's always off and on so it's like i can't really count that time so our relationships are not off and on a relationship mm -hmm. a, a relationship you're always together now you exactly. might you might have so your I, don't time think, you. I don't even think i even three. had a relationship you've never had someone say they basically been committed to you like I mean, when yeah, but it, it 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 was maybe a year, a year. That's how long ago? And how how long ago was that? Almost, what five years? Almost five years ago. So, uh, I mean, I gotta ask: Was that the father of one of your children? Mm-hmm. Okay, so why didn't you guys, like, why, why did y'all break up? Did you leave? He left. He left. Why? Um, 
we were just seeing things too. Well, he just left hell. I mean, I really don't know how to say he just left. He said that I wasn't in the place where he wanted me to be. And then when he wanted to take over the situation and just me go with him and he take care of everything, I, I asked him, was he sure? And I guess that that was a situation where he was like, if I'm telling you to do, then you just do. Um, and I didn't, I wanted him to know what he was getting into oh. before he got into it. Let me ask you a question. Has he, has he ever asked you to do something and he didn't basically pull his weight? I mean, we were new at that point. But, but yes, yes or no, has yeah. he ever, have you, has he ever? He, no. So he's never, he's, it's never happened. So why would you, why would you question him? Because at that point, I just wanted, okay, you're taking on me and my responsibilities. I'm pretty sure but, he understood that though. And I, yeah, but I wanted to make sure that he clearly understood it because once I would, once I picked up and left and went to him, it's as just a, us. As a man. Just and I understand, understand, I understand that now, but then I wasn't sure that so he, you, so but now it, I get it. Would it be safe to say that you messed up that situation? Yeah. It's a big, I understand, you just, uh, you just admit, okay, I, I respect that. So do you think there's any chance that you guys could get back together? Not without counseling. So have you talked to him about that and tried to get counseling? I've talked to him and we about and that. I did advise. About yeah, yeah, about the counseling thing. How, but how, I mean, like, and it's not even, and it's just me talking as a friend on a friend level, saying that you resent me for this. I triggered something in you to make you feel this way. As a you man. Can't say that. Now listen, as, as a man, if because we done already mapped this thing out in our head, I know for a fact if I go to this woman, I done already dotted my eyes and crossed my teeth. I done did this, that, and the third. I got enough money saved up, and this is the way that we need to move. So you were were you staying with him at the time or we didn't get there. Oh, okay. All right. So but anyway, at the time he done figured all of this out. And he was inviting you, yo, come with me. Because he, he's already met your, your other child, right? Mm -hmm. At this time and accepted her and all of that. So wouldn't it be safe to say that he already knew what he was getting into? So the fact that you question him as a man, you don't think that that would trigger anything in any type of guy? I'm just mm -hmm. asking. Yeah, that is true. All right. So why didn't you two get married? Cause he seems like he seems like a pretty good guy. That's the reason. <laughs> I mean, like he's he's he still resent me to this day for that situation. Cause it's always every anytime we've ever got into something, it will always boil back to that first situation. You, how, like, how hard did you fight for this thing once it happened? <clears throat> After it happened? Yeah. I mean, immediately, I've thought. E immediately after how I'm, I'm asking how oh, hard yeah yeah he, yeah hard but he did, it was just he I guess he was at the point where he was fed up because he didn't he didn't Look, this was this couldn't have been just one because ain't no way in the world so before this did you did it you was play? other stuff that piled on oh okay and, right. I mean like right. but it wasn't now now let me let me say it was never anything like I'm not saying major yeah, I'm just yeah, saying. If, that I mean, was. well, no, I guess he was saying that, like, for one, he was ex he was accepting every all of my baggage. Mm -hmm. He even said okay to this, 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 and this. Then when he looked at it, then now I'm telling him no. Like, I accepted you for this. I accepted this, this. I'm willing to take on all of this, and now you're telling me no. Mm -hmm. So I guess it was all of that. And then he was just like, you know what? I ain't got to do this. Mm. 
The thing about something good, man, you know, when it's around, dog, you got to you got to hold on to that thing, dog, for real. But um, so let's get into the next question. We don't want to stay, uh, spend too much time on that. Would you consider yourself masculine? Mm-hmm. And why would you say that? Because I feel like I can, I handle everything by myself. I do a lot. I feel like I, I'm a stand-up guy. All right. So if you were to get into a relationship, why do you feel the need to bring that masculinity into your relationships? Because of my previous um, relationships, my guard. This is why we need counseling, though. That's why I would say you need to seek somebody like a professional because they, they will help you with that. So when you go into your next relationship, it'll be like a clean slate versus actually, you know, thinking the way that we think. Because I'm, of- I'm not against that at all. But I'm just I'm just making a point for all the listeners out there. You know, I so said this is why we all need counseling, not just you, me, everybody that's probably listening that hasn't had counseling or it's been a while. This is why we need counseling. So we won't have this mindset going into, you know, new relationships. All right. So would you consider uh, would you say that the guys that you have been with have been alpha males or high value males? Um, a few. When you say what, some would be what math? I mean, high high value or alpha males? High value. Okay, so let's go ahead and put um, alpha. Let's put into context what a high value man is. A high value man, if we were to give it a number, they will be earning at least $10,000 per month, at least $120,000 per year, and they would be making that money for at least three to five years consecutively. All right, if we just to put a number on that thing. The next thing, they would have a group or you know, um, some, some sort of group of men that are high value as well, which all fall in the category of, of at least that number. And they would be accepted by those guys as either already being a high value man or have potential to be a high value man. All right. And then what is the uh, the next thing for that? He would have to be able to to bring something to the table as a high value man. Have something to give to the group, something, something like be able to offer something to the group that he's in. So, again, I ask you, have you ever been with a high value man? No. All right, so you said you have been with alpha males. hmm And why would you consider those guys alpha males? Define alpha male. Alpha male, just, uh, we'll, we'll give it just two things so we can hurry skip over this. Um, you know, a protector, uh, let me see, a leader, you know, does a great job when it comes to leading, all that other stuff. Oh, well, yeah. They've done all that. You taking, said care, taking care of business, um, making sure I'm good, they're good, um, just doing what a stand-up guy would do. And protect it, like you, mm-hmm. you felt yeah, protected with them. Okay, all right. Mm-hmm. So it's been more than one guy. Yeah. So why did you leave those other relationships if you were with an alpha male? Hold up, we talking about relationships? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every everything is based on relationships. Well, no, I ain't got, I ain't had nothing but one. Okay, so yeah, yeah. So we're we're, we're definitely not talking about sex and all that other stuff because at the end of the day, you that said been happen. with. Yeah, as in relationship. Anytime I talk, I'm gonna go ahead and say it's either based on relationships or marriage. That's what that's what we want to hear about. We don't want to hear about you know because we all we all have sex. We all, I mean, you can have a one night stand, you know what I'm saying? But we're not, we're not counting those people. We're just counting the people that you have actually spent time with, actually been in a relationship with, or actually been in a marriage with. All right. All right. So let's move on to the, to the next one. Uh, based on Pat, no, no, I think that's going to actually be for this, uh, the, the video or the podcast for tonight. Um, let's see. 
I think we already asked this. What, oh yeah, what are you currently doing to get the man that you want? Nothing. Um, I don't really, not doing anything, just doing my normal daily tasks. And if he comes, then he comes. So you're not actively looking for the man. I'm not actively want. looking. <clears throat> or doing I'm anything. Not, I mean, I'm not looking. Okay, so you're not doing anything to, to get the man that you want. How old are you? 30. And what age would you like to be married by? 35. Why so late? I mean, I would be, if I had a potential husband today, we would be married, you know. But I'm not, I'm not out looking for someone. Um, now, do I make sure that I can keep myself together just to, just in case someone walks by or I meet someone or anything. Quick then, question. Do you think it's easier or harder for a woman to get married the older she is? Do you think her value goes up or goes down? Or you think men, the way that they look at a woman's value goes up or goes down the older she gets? I don't think either. Why is because, that? Because if it's a men are going to go for what they want. And I hear what you're saying, but I say, do you think a woman's value is going to increase or de decrease the older she gets? Uh, mm, mm, mm. Maybe she, it's probably going to decrease because, I mean, it depends on what the man wants, though. I'm but start sagging, the skin ain't as tight yeah, as it used to be. Yeah. She had kids, you know, it is what it is. So why not try to get married and actually put forth that effort now instead of waiting until your first time? I mean, I would just, I'm just giving out a number because if I was to meet the man, man I wanted today, so how you are you get married tomorrow? How are you gonna meet that man if you're not actively looking or doing something to to find this guy? Put yourself in certain environments that these type of men are at to try to you know find the man. And the man of your dreams may be sitting at a doggone coffee shop right now, just sitting there reading his book. You come along, you know, put yourself in the environment. He sees you. Y'all get together before th the age of thirty five. You meet the man of your dreams and you are now you get you've gotten everything that you wanted in life. But instead of waiting, you went ahead and put yourself out there to find this man. This is this is how we got to start thinking about things instead of waiting. That's true. I mean, I do. OK, if, in the sense of that, I will get up and I'll go out somewhere just to. I mean, like, it's a, it's always a thought that, hey, I may meet somebody, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, I do go out to different places, um, to different and settings, I, I, and I I'm say, open. I feel you. I, I, I want to pause this real quick and just say this, guys, uh, for the women that are listening, the men are listening. The chances of you meeting your husband or your wife in a club is going to be slim to none. If you want to meet a wife or a husband, you need to go in those type of environments, all right? The club, going out to these bars and stuff is not the way to go, all right? Because most people, I'm not going to say everybody, but most people that go to these type of places, they're looking to hook up, all right? They're looking to sleep around with somebody. Most of those people are not looking for a husband or a wife, all right? So what did you, where do you think these type of men would be hanging out? Like if you were to go somewhere like right now, what do you think these type of, what well, the type of guy that you want would be hanging out at? Where, where, where would he be? Right now, this time of the day. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I mean, like it can be any time of the day, but where, where do you think he would be at? Mm. He'll probably be at a high value bar with food um, 
or he may be at like a a nice restaurant. Okay, there we go. There we go. Um, a five star. It makes sense. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, or a suit and tie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I just see him and I visualize him in my head. That's what's up. Like, That's beautiful. Manifest that thing. <laughs> All right. So um, let's, let's go. Oh, go, go ahead. Go. Anywhere else you would be? A coffee shop. Okay. A nice coffee shop, like a high value coffee shop. Not just, I mean, I love Starbucks, but you know, he might not be at Starbucks. I don't think he's going to be at Starbucks. Okay. Well, I would say the, the place that you name, let's try to let's try to get you in those settings, man. Get you in a nice dress, some nice heels, you know, make sure your hair is done up or whatnot, what have you. And you are tonight. looking looking available. Yeah. Let's go ahead and see if we can uh we can get you in one of these high value men out here. <laughs> All right. So based on your relationships, they would say what? They would say you are this type of person. If you were to sum it up in something, you know, really, really quick. I'm a great person. I'm loving. I'm caring. I am. And this is them talking, not you, right? <clears throat> yeah, I know. And this is what they'll say. Yeah. Um, that I care. Sometimes I may care too much. Um. The person that I have become today is amazing based on the person that I was years ago. So they, they got the person that you was years ago. That's what we talk. We talking about that person. I mean, but if you're asking today, they're going to give you me. All of your exes know who you are today. Like they've actually sat down and actually they know the person that you are today. They're going to speak based on the relationship that you guys were in. Based on your last relationship, <clears throat> they say you are or, or you were in those relationships. Only one person who don't know me today. Okay. Yeah, so that's so, definitely where I don't, And I honestly don't know what they would say. It would be good to sit down and ask them, like ask those people that you've been in relationships with. Because I'm pretty sure you still you still are cordial, at least with, with most of the people you've dated, right? Yeah, but except, except for one person. It's only one person that I don't know what they would say. Mm -hmm. I would definitely sit down and talk to them and ask them, you know, what did they what did they think, you know, what type of person you were. Because I feel like those people are going to be completely honest with it because they don't have any ties to us. Instead of asking people that are in your current circle. Because most of the time, people are going to sugarcoat even, even though they'll say they're going to be raw and honest with you. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it, man. So Devontae asked me this, so you know what I'm saying? This is what everybody been waiting on. Okay, on a scale from 1 to 10, I want you to give your honest ranking just using your faith, fresh out the shower, no makeup, uh, no weave, none of that. Just fresh out the shower, fresh face on a scale from one to 10 and you cannot use seven. Eight. <laughs> All right. Okay, so why would you consider yourself an eight? Okay, let me, let me, let me go back and think about this thing because I was just really just being sarcastic. So whenever I'm freshly out the shower, Mm-hmm and just wrapped in a towel with my hair just wherever and yeah 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 your hair just been washed uh you know what i'm saying we're just looking at the face we're not looking at anything else just oh just face. oh just my face mm -hmm. i'm gonna give myself a 10 i still think highly of myself all right so when we think about 10 we think about 10 being the most beautiful people in the world mm -hmm. so Me. all right so if somebody was aligned so when i think about Let's think about eights, nines, and tens. Let's think about celebrities, all right? So this, this will be easily, easy to relate to everybody that's listening to this. Who would you consider, on a scale from one to 10, who would you consider would be a 10 as a celebrity? Or why she thinking about um, that? Um, okay, well, go ahead. 
while she thinks about that, let's let's go ahead and tell her what, what most men might think. Most men would say Beyonce is not a 10. Most men would say Beyonce is maybe like fresh out the shower, no makeup. We'll give her probably like, like an eight, right? And I always felt like Kelly looked better than Beyonce. So she would be somewhere around the nine-ish. Her, uh, Megan Good. Megan Good is probably between a nine and a 10. Um, uh, let me see. Pam Greer. Pam Greer might be the closest thing to, to a 10 that I would say. And this was before, you know, all of those uh, celebrities start getting like, uh, you know, facial enhancements, you know, the nose and, and all the other stuff. This was back. This was back in the day. So. Uh, have you have you came up with um, celebrity you would think would be be a 10? Gabrielle Union. Gabrielle Union would be a 10 on your scale. So mm -hmm. if you were to put your picture up and put Gabrielle's picture up and they got a group of a, of 100 men in there those guys would say that these women are equal on a face scale. I don't know what they would say. What, what do you think they would say? Do you think that they would agree that both of these women are pretty much equal when mm -hmm. they count their face? Yep. So you would say, so who would be like an eight or a nine? I don't know. Mm. Any celebrity, you can pick any celebrity. I know, but I don't really. Fresh, without without makeup, would you consider? Would you? Because you you shook your head um, no when you said well when you shook your head yes when you said Beyonce would be an eight, right? So I get she I get her yeah she would be eight. Right, so you would say if somebody was to put your face up against Beyonce's face, they would choose your face over Beyonce's face. They're gonna choose her because she's. It, take take away the money. Take away the money. We're just talking about fresh face out of the shower. She's a regular person. Shouldn't be hard. Come on now. I mean, yeah, I feel like I, I feel like I win or whatever the situation is. I'm not going to say that I'm I'm not gonna give myself lower than a 10 because I think highly of myself. And I don't care who the person is, what that person have, I still feel like I'm a 10. I feel what you're saying. We just we're just asking for you know everybody to be realistic about and I'm not saying you should not think highly of yourself at all. When we do these skills and all the other stuff, we just want people to be realistic. So I actually gave myself a six because that's average. A six is average. There's nothing wrong with average, guys. Let's go ahead and straighten it up right now. All right, there is absolutely nothing wrong with six because what we call it is adjustable six. You can fix yourself up to be an eight. Again, there is nothing wrong with average. But when I started thinking about myself, I was like, okay, when I think about uh, Igris, Al Albus, or whatever, uh, whatever that guy's name is, what's the other guy's name um, that played on The Best Man that, that ladies absolutely love? Um, Morris Chestnut. Morris Chestnut, yeah. Morris Chestnut, <laughs> I was, if I'm being completely honest, I feel like Morris Chestnut would be somewhere around the 9, 10 range. And if I'm being completely honest, come on, man, somebody put my picture up against his picture. 10 times out of 10, they're going to choose his picture. But I'm being realistic because I know people are going to choose him 10 times out of 10 times. Because no homo, the guy, he's, he's a good looking guy. All right. But one thing about me, I always try to be realistic. Not saying that I'm putting myself down because everybody already know I think highly of myself. And that's not, I'm not trying to brag anything. But we just ask you to be more realistic about what you are rating yourself. So what's up? Are, are we going to stick with that or are we going to be, are we, we going to give ourselves a different number? I'll give myself a, oh, you said I can't pick seven. No sevens, no. no Why? Seven. Because everybody, that's a safe number for everybody. Everybody's going to always choose a seven. Well, I'm going to go with eight. She's going to go with eight. Okay, so on a scale from one to 10, what would you give your face, your body? And again, this is natural state. If somebody were to, when they think about those modeling, uh, modeling casts, when they bring you in as a model, you're going to go in there with your bra, panties, and they're going to basically tell you how it is. You need to work on this part, this part, this part. So if you were to walk into one of those, what would you give yourself on a scale from one to 10? Fresh face out the shower, you know, hair down, bra, just a bra and panties on. Somebody was the what would you what would you think a person would give you? 
A six. Okay. What would you give yourself? A seven. And you can't use seven. I'll give myself a six. Okay. How tall are you? 4'11". And how much do you weigh? 11. What happens when you ain't supposed to ask a woman these questions? Yeah, we're in an interview, man. We don't care nothing about that. If people want to know, how much do you weigh? 186. All right. And all right, so we're getting back into the, the rating real quick, guys. Um, when it comes to money on a scale from one to 10, what do you think you are money-wise? Six. Okay, all right. And if you were to rate your sex on a scale from one to 10, what would it be? Six. Okay, all right, not bad, not bad. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's average. <laughs> I can't I say to, seven. I gave myself like a two, I believe. I want to say I think I gave myself like a two on a sex sex scale. Um, where do you see yourself within the next year? Really important question. As far as everything, where do you want to be in a year? Where do you see yourself? This has to do with everything overall. These are things that we honestly need to think about each and every day. I mean, I, I guess I'm, are you asking in the form of a- Everything. Of a level like, I or be, I what be, I want to be doing? Okay, so let me, let me next clear it up. What do I see? Somebody asked me, what do I see myself ne uh, by, by next year? I want to be making at least $130,000. I want to be doing uh, YouTube full time. I want to be married. I want to have eight children. I want to be living in Texas in a house that's eight bedrooms, six bathrooms. I want to stay, you know, this place. And I want to make sure I'm able to, to take out money and, and be able to go on vacation. Just the whole spiel. What do you see yourself within a year's time? Um, within the next year, I want to be um, completely financially stable. I want to be in a healthy relationship with a man. Wait a minute. When you say financially stable, put a number on it. How much money do you want to be making? Or if you're with a husband, how much money does he need to be making? How much money do y'all need to be making together? We got to put, we got to put like some hard concrete evidence or, or whatever facts behind everything that we're saying. We both need to be making at least 80,000 within the next year. Okay. Um, we need to be on the same page. We need to be in a non-toxic relationship, raising these kids, um, focusing Fair. Fair. on, in a year, ain't even got no boyfriend. It don't even, it don't take six months for a man to know if you want to marry a woman or not. Man. Okay. I ain't gonna be in, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm gonna be married in a year, but the next year I do feel like I want to be in a relationship, a healthy relationship, building towards building a marriage, um, stable stability, um, regardless of where we are, I want to be able to stay. do more. Where do you want to stay? We want to know, where do you want to stay within the next year? I mean, I, I don't have a set destination. I could stay in Charlotte for all I care. Figure that out. Yeah. We want solid answers behind these questions. So you want to be in Charlotte? Yeah, Charlotte's fine. Um, purchasing my house or our house. It just depends on how things go. Um, well, we say at least engaged then. If y'all talking about getting a house and, get, and doing all this building, at least an engage engagement or something that's plan b for me okay i have a plan b my plan a is if i'm going to be with him but if i if that all else fails then my plan b is for me to be purchasing my house with my children um i want to be able to have an open availability so 
making money, but want to be in control of your time. Own, right. That is like my main goal because I want to be able to have an open availability for my kids and putting them in activities and be able to participate in those school and outside of school activities. I'm, the reason why I keep saying this because it's cool for you to be on your own and doing this, but it becomes a lot easier when you have someone that's with you. Instead it of you is. having to instead of you having to front all the money for, you know, Everything. all of your expenses, the mortgage, you know, uh, or the rent, you know, if you're in that type of situation, if you got a new car and all the other stuff, think about how easy life would be if you have somebody to share that with, to share that load with, or even even a man that can take all of that stuff off of you, where you don't have to worry about nothing. And I'm talking about, I know you said plan A and plan B. Let's put all, I mean, like if we're doing the things that we need to do, I'm all, I'm always like this. If we are the person that we're supposed to be, there is no way in heck that God is going to fail us. You put all your doggone eggs in that doggone basket and he's going to, he's going to take care. He's going to provide because let's just say you do do that. Let's think about all the positive. You do do that. You put all your eggs in one basket and you spend the rest of your life with this man. You gave this man everything that a wife could ask for. Y'all are happily married in a huge house. And he's paying, if not all the bills, he's paying most of the bills. Allow you to be comfortable and become the person that you've always wanted to be. Now you have time to work out. You got time to spend time with your kids. You got time to spend with him. Y'all going on vacation and all the other stuff because you became the person that God has always wanted you to be. Let's think about it like that. Instead of always thinking about, you know, what the what if. Let's think about it like that. I, I respect your, I respect the uh, the Plan B aspect and all the other stuff, but I honestly feel like, and I see it so much now. It's so crazy, man. Coming from the life that I used to be, in, I don't want to make this thing about me, but coming to, coming from the life that I used to be in and the environment that I was in, you know, seeing so many single single parents, single mothers out here unmarried, and I done got introduced to the whole and i'm like yo i never thought this world ever existed you got people that are out here happily married 20 plus years and they both are doing exactly what they've always wanted to do in life there are people out here like that man don't believe the media and sometimes we have to get out of the environment that we are currently in and actually be able to experience like different people man that's why i walk up to somebody in a second I see that you, you know, you walking up and down the aisle, talking to your wife or whatever. I'm going to approach you. Like, I want to know, like, what did y'all do to make it work? I want to talk to those people more and get those conversations and stuff started. So my mindset can be shifted from what it was to what it, what it can be. But yeah, I just, we, we, we got we to gotta get out of pretty much what most of us grew up in. Those quote unquote with people, and I don't like using this word, those toxic environments or those bad environments. It helps you shift your mind and focus on. I'm telling, hey yo, I'm telling you, on this, it's so much nicer on this side of the fence, man, for real. But yeah, so go ahead and, and continue. What else, what else do you um do you where do you see yourself uh, within a year? I'm sorry, I'm, my bad, y'all. Um, I think that was pretty much it. Okay, sure. You want you want you want a car? You want two cars? What you want? You want what you want to be driving. We want to know the whole spiel. I'm going to keep driving what I'm currently driving. I'm, I'm content with that. But you just recently got a car, so you good. Yeah, you good. <laughs> I'm content right now. <laughs> oh, man. But it's been an absolute pleasure, man. Thank you so much for doing this interview. Desiree actually invited us into her home. Desiree is actually in the other room right now, guys. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for us doing this interview here. We got a podcast later on tonight. And this has been the interview with the one and only Desiree Moore, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate you for coming out, man. We done flew, we done flew her out from Paris. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Did you got anything? I came from you? Dubai, honey, to do this interview. <laughs> and she done flipped her hair with. <laughs> Period. You gotta do what, they little... <laughs> what they be saying? What they be saying? They did a little hand gesture too. <laughs> <laughs> I just 
get on my nerves with that, though. For real. Uh, uh, I can see my, I can see one of my twin sisters. She do it. Well, both of them do it all the time. They be like, like okay, <laughs> all right. It's okay. No, it's real out here, though. <laughs> <laughs> you got anything else that you want to add you want the people to, to know about you can go ahead and plug yourself in again if you want to man so people know where to find you maybe you got a website youtube channel or instagram that you want to invite them to to go ahead and promote yourself that's what we are all about man always you got to always promote yourself man please go to my group on facebook it is book a trip and just go Hey. By, by Desiree Moore. You can also go to my website, use it just like you use booking.com. And it'll be my first name, last name, which is A N T H R O N I A M O O R E R dot Intella Travel, I N T E L E T R A V. Now I forgot it. Travel, T R A V E L dot com. Look. <laughs> <laughs> we still hey they got their pen and paper hey they can always rewind it <laughs> <laughs> Look, I forgot how to spell it travel I'm spelling it I got I'm like hold on wait wait <laughs> what's the red what's the other two letters <laughs> Hey, Maria, hey, as long as you got your dog on plug in again thank you so much Desiree for taking the time out of your busy day man to do this interview we really appreciate it and we really want you to go far in life man we have these uncomfortable conversations because I honestly want to see everybody around me become the best version of themselves. All right. And I do feel like that you are a great person, man. And you honestly deserve the best. All right. I greatly appreciate you. I'm glad you feel that way about me. Absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm so proud of the man that you've become. Thank you. I appreciate it. Man. Because you. I know you from way back in the day. And on that note, we're going to go ahead and end this podcast. Thank y'all so much, man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, that's...